All right, Joel and I are making an afternoon trip and we gotta hurry. All right, Joel and I sat through the traffic jam from hell. So we are getting a really, really late start. It's almost five o'clock. Now we intentionally fished the afternoon today because we want to fish this fallen tide. You know how much we love fishing these fallen tides, particularly this time of year. And as you can see, the skies are nice and overcast. Got some blue here and there. Storms all around, but you're gonna have that this time of year. Just par for the course. Might have to dodge one or two, but hopefully it's no big deal. But Joel and I are doing a competition today, one that I intend to win, finally, because as you know, I'm on a terrible, terrible streak as far as competitions go. I haven't won one in a while. But here's the deal today. Joel and I are gonna weigh every single fish we catch, cumulative, heaviest weight, at sunset. Sunset today is what time, Joel? 8.05. 8.05. Cumulative heaviest weight at sunset is the winner. And today is definitely one you want to win because the loser has to buy the winner a $50 Puglia's gift card. So that's a great prize. You know, Puglia's, of course, is my favorite tackle shop. So I'd love to have a $50 gift card. Just think what you could buy a Puglia's for $50. And you can tell my voice is a little bit hoarse. We had 4th of July festivities yesterday, had a volleyball tournament in some friend's pool. So we're doing a lot of yelling. <laughs> And we still lost. <laughs> yeah, and we still lost. Yeah, Joel's on my team, but we didn't win. We finished third. That's the good news. The bad news is there were only four teams, so it's not so great. I'm going to throw a lot of different stuff today, but I'm starting right now with this number four H&H &H gold spinner. Joel, what are you throwing? A Spartacus Vortex Shad. Joel's throwing a Spartacus Vortex Shad. That definitely produced for him on our last trip. And the water in this area we're fishing is, is not, um, it's not great. So that might be, might be a good option. But hey, the reality is in Louisiana this year, inside all these marshes, the water has been, has been really bad. I mean, it's true across the whole coast. And my hypothesis is that it's because of all the rain we've gotten. We're way, way, way over the average on rain. All right, there's just too much grass in this bayou to throw that spinner, at least in this little section. So I've made a switch to a, a Zoom Speed Craw, real subtle bait, just trying to get bites. And I got it on a, or underneath a 1 8 ounce brass bullet weight. You can see it's floating grass here. It's just a lot in this bayou. The tide's screaming, man. One of the other rules of our competition is whenever a fish is put on the boat, we switch positions. So I'm first on the trolling motor, but hopefully I'm not here for long. Water's nice and low. We've had a few days of west wind drop this water out. Today, the wind's out the south, but it is a falling tide. We both throw in a Texas rig, aren't we? That's not good team fishing. You gonna throw a cork? Wow, okay. Come on, I wanna feel that doink. Doink. Got no doubt about it hit. And a good start. Give me a big lead. I'm feeling the pressure. Dude, this competition might end in a zero zero tie. <laughs> That's looking too good. Well folks, I didn't lose this one. All right, I'm 0, 13 and 1. Oh no, no way. Redfish? Oh, what? I got a stingray. Stingray? <laughs> well, you know, we got some bad news here because it might be a cat. He's acting weird. We do not have a net. It's sitting safely at home in the garage. So hopefully Joel loses this fish. Dude, I got 10 pound line on here, man. Good, hopefully you break off. He is definitely fighting weird. Oh, it's a gall. Is it? With no net. Good luck landing him. <laughs> it went away a lot. But... Oh, it is a gar. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> We're in the gar hole, Joel. Joel is hooked up to a massive... Oh, dude, look at that. Massive monster gar. Joel loves to catch gar. And we have no net, so he's not gonna be able to land this fish. Dude, I'd recommend you cut your line. <laughs> Would you like me to get you? Oh, there we go. 
Well, it's best case scenario. The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Oh, Joel, never mind. You got a bite? Uh-uh. You didn't, no? no. Nope. No, no. Nope. Nope. Let me see if I can throw here and get not another bite. I don't, I always hate to say it, but you notice something? I do. wind went from 20 to 5. I still think it's blowing a little bit. If you have to think about whether it's blowing, it's obviously not too bad. It's such a giant hole right here. I've caught a few fish in it, but nothing. Usually that hole's better. You would think this one coming right out of this pond would be good, but. Was it like 10 feet? Yeah, it's like 10 feet, literally. There's the trap. Oh, oh. There's a fish. <laughs> That's a red. That's a red for sure. It's gotta be a red. It's not a bad red either. Keep a red. Yeah, baby. There we go. Keep a red fish. We got to weigh him. He's skinny. He's definitely skinny, and you can see how white he is. That tells you without question that this water is dirty. But I'm glad to uh, have caught this fish on my speed craw. Open up, buddy. The faster you do this, the faster you get back in the water. 2.2. Two pounds, two tenths of a pound. 2.2. .2. We're not keeping fish today, so he's going to get to swim again. Got the skunk out of the boat. This fish, we're on the other side of it. We came in from this way. It was right in this deep water right here. Let's see if there are any more there. It kind of fits with the pattern the last time Joel and I fished. It was the only place we could find fish. Actually, we found them pretty quickly in the trip, but they were in deep water, like nine to 10 feet. This little bend right here is about 10 feet. You ready to roll? Yeah. All right, that's it for this area. We're gonna run to a different bayou. Hopefully find some cleaner water. I think that was our limiting factor in this one, but see what else we can find. All right, we're in our next bayou. The water's probably a shade better. It's actually not too bad. It's definitely fishable. And the tide is just screaming out of here. We're gonna see if we can find some more of these deep reds. This bayou right here is 7.2 feet, and it's got some bends coming up that should have a little more depth. So hopefully they'll have some reds. I'm throwing this New Year's Eve colored H&H Cockaho on a quarter ounce death grip jig head with the way this current is rolling. Actually would not be a bad idea to tie on a three ace and that's actually what Joel is doing. The good news is that we're going into the current. So at least initially I'll be pulling my bait with it. Definitely feeling the pressure of the clock today. Search and search and searching for fish, but we don't have a long time. Thanks to that traffic jam, it's already six o'clock right now. And as I mentioned, sunset is at 8.05. So we got a couple hours left. So we're in search mode. I like the pressure though. Do you want the trolling motor? We were supposed to switch. You want it? There's a fish. Oh. Is that a trout? Is that a trout? Is that a trout? It sure is. Speck a trout, speck a trout. Not expected. However, Joel and I said that every fish counts, whether it's legal or not. So this guy's getting weighed. All right, point four zero. Mark it. Point four zero. Let's get this little guy go. I'll take it. See you, dude. Swim off. All right, the fish was not even half a pound, but I will take it. Definitely not expecting a speckled trout, but that's what abides in these marshes in the summertime, just those juveniles, fish that are not mature, so they don't go out to spawn. Typically, that's a fish that was spawned late in the summer last year. It just didn't have enough time to grow and mature so it could head out this year. It's possible it could mature during this spawning season and head out but more likely it won't spawn until next summer or next spring. You got that pop bar already tied on? 
If you stick with that, you're going to catch fish on it. That's my prediction. Look at the water coming around this point. I mean, if there's not a fish there, we should just go home. We should just call it a day. Oh, no. Is that a bass? Uh-oh. Pop R. I knew it. I knew it. Come on, jump. 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 Oh, he's not even that big. Big as the trout was. I think he's bigger than the trout, but that's quite an explosion, though. 0.55, mark it. 0.55. See you, little guy. You on the board, Joel? On the board, brother. That actually gets me a little bit nervous because I think those fish are going to hit that pop bar for the rest of the day. All right, now I got to find a pop bar. That's going to be the challenge. Top water. Oh, pop bar. Found one. Found one. I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but like there's a copious amount of bait right here. We've found situations like this all over the marsh this afternoon. Really looks good, really looks fishy. Now, there's two possibilities. Either there's not many fish around where we're fishing or we're not throwing what they want. But Joel just, I don't know, he made maybe 15 casts with that pop bar before catching that fish. And now I've tied one on as well. So we'll see, maybe this is what they want. That wouldn't hurt our feelings at all because it's a very, very fun way to fish. If you saw my last video, you know, I like to fish this thing walking the dog, but occasionally I will stop it and just pop it. But I'm gonna fish it like this for a while just to see. Who knows, Joel's fish could have been a fluke. I mean, the mouth of this bayou at this pond should have some fish. If there's a God in heaven. Oh, dude, I got smoked. Oh, dude, I got smoked. I got smoked by a sheephead right next to the boat. That's crazy. That would have been good for the challenge. He slurped it just as it hit the surface. Oh, oh, right next to the boat. Oh. 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 There he is. That's a red. That's a red. That's a red. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Same. That's a red fish. Oh, my pop bar. Hopefully you got a face full of these hooks, dude. We got no net, no net. All right, all right. There he is, captured, captured on the pop bar. On a pop bar, most fun way to catch them top water. I think I'm well on my way to beating Joel in this challenge, but we'll see. All right, 3.40. It's the beauty of the pop bar. Both bass and redfish love them. Speckled trout do as well. You wouldn't expect to catch a keeper speckled trout in the marsh this time of year, but who knows, crazier things have happened. You got Joel. Got a bass. It's actually it's not a bad bass either. Joel's got a bass on his pop bar. I'm changing a fuse that blew on my electronics. Yeah, well, not a giant, but it's a fish. All right, not a bad one. Little, probably, he's probably 0. 0.6 half pound on that pop bar. About to find out his weight right now. 0.6. 0.6? Yep. 
All right, as you can see, that sun's getting low on the horizon. It's behind a cloud, but we don't have very much longer. Maybe 30 minutes or so. Yeah, it's 737, so even less than that. Was that you? Dude. Huh? I can't believe this. Was that a hit on you? I broke off. Oh, you broke off? I mean... Oh, no way. Dude, I just... <laughs> Was it a bass? Dude, I never tie a badge on and I just did. Look at that. I never Look at tie Joel a tied a bad knot. I never tied a bad knot. <laughs> yeah, that's the really bad thing. You lost that pop bar. That's the worst part of that. Ooh. Oh my gosh, as soon as you threw it. Dude, I threw it in his mouth. Dude. Holy nice. <laughs> All right. It's pounds. Well, it ain't even pounds. It's ounces. All right, this fish is 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6. See, dude, you're little. But you're over half a pound, and you're some weight. This is why we wanted to fish the afternoon. You got this falling tide with this low sun, and these fish are just going bananas on top water. Just a lot of fun. All right, you see that? That setting sun means this competition has come to an end, and I think my streak it's also come to an end. It's been a lean stretch, man. Joel's been killing me in competitions. I finally got the better of him today though, which means I'm having a Puglia shopping spree. Can't wait for that. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Mass on channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Mass on.